Every year as a farmer, I prepare the planter for the upcoming planting season, hoping for a good, profitable year of growing and raising crops. But this year, things are different. Most times, at least the last three years of my farming career, when we pull the planter out into the field and start planting crops, I am able to start selling or forward marketing some of the grain that I will be raising out in the fields at a profitable level. But this year, with some of the tariffs that have been slapped on different countries that export some of our commodities that we raise here as farmers, we're just not able to sell any of the grain that we're gonna be growing here starting very soon at profitable levels. With the margins as tight as they are in farming, that means all the preparation I'm gonna be doing today on the planter, it is just that much more important to gain just an extra bushel, an extra half a bushel, whatever that looks like. We wanna make sure our planter is dialed in as close to 100% accuracy as it can be. So today we're gonna to be going through everything on the planter to get that accuracy, to ensure that at the end of the season, there is no look backs and saying, we wish we would have changed this, we wish we could have done that better. That way we can hopefully turn what is looking to be a not so great year on the farm to hopefully a profitable year, at least a break even year here at the farm. The first thing I'm gonna get started on the planter with for today is the speed tubes. That is this, that it has this small electrical motor that powers these wheels. And this is what allows us to plant at eight miles an hour. I'll show you once I get the first belt, but the first thing I'm gonna do is start working on these. While I'm working on the meter and the speed tube portion of things, dad is checking the seed disc. That is this basically knife right here. This is what cuts the soil. Making sure that's up to spec because after about four years of use on those, sometimes you have to replace them. So he's gonna do a quick measurement on that. Here's the first speed tube I'm gonna be working on. There is this belt right here that will sit on the inside of this speed tube. This is what actually takes the seed, individual kernels of grain, all the way down to the bottom of the trench, and this spins around very rapidly. Like I said, that's what lets you go super fast. And we take all these belts out in the winter months just because we don't wanna get them all stretched out. So we take them off and let them basically take the tension off. So I'm gonna start popping these back in, all of the 24 different speed tubes that we have. I got all the speed tubes back on the planter with the belts in place and tensioned properly. I also went ahead just as precaution and replaced all these small little treader wheels. These basically are what pluck the seed off the meter and then the seed gets conveyed onto this small little belt. Here I have one of the old ones. You can see it's all pretty well ground off and beat up on the one side. So I just replaced all those as well. The next thing we gotta get put on the planter are the actual meters, the things that actually take the seed from those big yellow tanks in the back of the planter and deliver them precisely to each row. And we have all of those sitting in here in the shop. Dad already went ahead and calibrated all of our meters right here on our Precision Meter Max stand. So I believe he has all of these now at least calibrated to 99.9% .9 or 99.8% percentage of singulation. So all but two out of a thousand times this thing will plant perfectly spaced seed, which is what we want. That's gonna help maximize yield. So now we're gonna get all these put onto the planter as well, and then we'll see if make sure everything connects properly to the tractor and all the monitors in there. All the meters are on the planter now. It takes a little while because there is quite a few things electrically that need to be hooked up to control the meters. And that's because each individual meter has its own separate electric motor. So it has individual row turnoffs, individual row clutches, I should say. So when you're going in a field, if it's not perfectly shaped like a square and you have a couple rows that you don't wanna overlap on the other rows you've already planted on, this planter is automatically gonna shut off those rows knowing where it's already planted. So. There's quite a few things electrically that need to be hooked up every season just to make that work. 
And now there's even more things we need to hook up to get all of everything hooked up to the planter here, talking to all of the things up in the tractor. And that's this big wad of mess right here that we're about to start breaking into. Let's try the easy method to getting this thing hooked up. Didn't work. Still didn't work. Yeah, unfortunately that's not gonna work here, so we'll have to get everything hooked up and then we'll test it. With all the hydraulics hooked up now on the tractor, since this tractor also runs the grain cart, I need to manipulate or change some of the hydraulic settings. That way everything's set up inside this screen and all of the hydraulic flows are set up perfectly for the planner. And also, we'll turn on our 2020, the screen that actually controls everything on the planner, and within moments this will tell us whether I hooked everything up right or wrong. Go to our hydraulic screen and now start punching in the numbers and mounts that we need on here. With all the hydraulics set on the planter now, I also have a globe right here on the planter. Because I'm gonna be using passive implement guidance, which basically means the planter is gonna be steering the tractor. So if the planter wants to be on this line and for the planter to be here, the tractor needs to be over three inches off this line, it will. So I need to check and make sure there isn't an update I need to do on that. Tell me if there's an update here. We're hooked up to the internet in the shop, so it's really nice. I don't have to plug USBs or anything. It'll download everything wirelessly. So we'll start the update on there and while that's going up here on the 2020 I'm having PTSD seeing all of the field names that have replant behind them because of all the drown out acres and acres We replanted last year, so I'm going to delete all of those that way I don't have to pan through them all season long Hey, if this year's like last year with all these replants, I think I'm gonna quit <laughs> Him too now to check if all my electronics are working, which this is going to tell me with an instance when I get find the screen right here. Oops, where'd we go? Here? There we go. If everything's green, it's all working. And it is looking like everything is green, so we are good. While I was working on that stuff, Dad got all of the disc openers down here. Made sure those are all meeting for that inch and a half to two inch of clearance down below. Also, greased everything on the planter, but he found two or three things we're about to adjust. Coming? Here you go. Is that enough? It ain't loose. One of which, the row cleaner here, this spins, clears the trash out before the planter comes. For some reason on this row, it is not perfectly straight. You can see this side is sitting up a little bit higher, this black bracket on that side than it is on this side. So we're gonna loosen up these four bolts, try to get that straight across like it is on all the others. Right there? Yep. Here's the C disc openers that he checked that he wants me to double check to see if we need to shim anything on them. To check to see if these discs are hitting for the inch and a half to two inches we need, take a business card here, Take a business card down here, stick the two business cards just like that, take the old tape measure, and you take this measurement, and as you can tell, it's only about an inch, inch and a quarter, which means they are not touching enough. Now check that in another spot. Slide this in, slide this in, and I can already tell, we're gonna have to take a shim out of here. You want to add one? No. We want it to touch more. Touch more? Yeah, we need the plates to touch more. So you got to take one of those washers out. So that's going to make it tighter. Which is what we want. It'll then touch you're gonna more. It's going to be like an inch. No. He's taking out one of them little washers. That way we'll have the disc closer. That should meet that inch and a half to two inch measurement we want on disc contact. Check it. Oh, that's good. That looks pretty good. 
we should now have about 99% of things ready to go on the planter for this spring. Why is it not starting? We still do, however, need to take the planter outside, which won't be today because it's like 50 mile per hour winds. Get everything folded out, make sure everything's gonna work, do a health check once we get it outside. Also, for some reason, our coupler on row unit number three, we got a new one of these coming since this one doesn't fit on the row for anymore for some reason. So those are some of the small things we need to get ready and improve on before planting's here in about 20 days, I would guess which will be here in a hurry because we still have a fair amount of other things, other pieces of equipment to get ready. I still have some GPS things that I'm trying to refine on and I'll show you guys in an upcoming video, which if you wanna see it, it's super cool. I'm super proud of it. I'll show you it in a future video, so I encourage you to hit subscribe down below. With that, that's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. There's my drone I'm still working on. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.